And I'm live, I think. <laughs> I'm having internet problems this morning here. <sighs> Come on. It's like my ethernet is not working. I don't know what's going on. So I'm trying to stream through the Wi-Fi and that's not working well. So, Merry Christmas everyone. I think I'm live. <laughs> Oh, where am I? Where am I? Welcome to Roxim Live. This is episode number 41 or 101. <laughs> 41. Where did I get that from? Uh, I was reading uh, the chat. Rick says it's 42 degrees by him. Um, and I'm thinking 42, 41. What's the meaning of life, the university in it, and the universe and everything? It's 42. Ah, Johan says Michelle's laptop runs flawless. I know. And she's got the same kind of laptop as mine. Hers is a little bit newer, but not much. Um, so, <laughs> I'm looking at my computer screen, and I'm trying to do a million things at once. Like I say, I'm fighting technology issues. So let's, um, I got that going. <laughs> so let's go to my desktop so you can see what I'm seeing on my desktop. Um, I gotta move this out of the way. You'll get vertigo. <sighs> Where am I? Where am I? Um, so this is Roxim Live. It is December 23, 2022. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, so if I forget to say it, Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm glad you're here spending your time with me. Um, I was not here last week. I thought I was going to be here, but then I had a meeting, and I thought the meeting was going to get canceled, and I thought the meeting was going to be a short meeting, and it turned it to be all day long. Uh, so we were planning for next year with my, um, um, we call it the board. It's the alternative board, which are, is a group of uh, entrepreneurs that uh, there's like about seven or eight of us. And we get together once a month and we talk about our businesses and we ask each other really hard questions like, you know, everybody says, oh, I'm going to do 30% more next year. And then they say, well, how are you going to do 30% more? What's your specific plan? Because if you're just hoping that 30% more people are going to show up, it's not going to happen. You know, you got to push the bus. Um, so that was the kind of hard questions we we're asking. And I did write a newsletter article about some of the things that we're going to do next year to try to push the bus forward try to get that, you know, I don't know if it's going to be 30%, but um, big plans for next year. And it's all going to start here pretty much next week because next week we're going to start changing some things over, getting things ready for the beginning of the year. Um, but they might actually start a little bit early because we want to get, you know, we want to start the year off running hard. Uh, I've got a lot of big plans uh, going on, and if you're if you're interested in reading that, um, if you're on the Apogee website at rock, ApogeeRockets.com, just scroll down here to this um, blog that's called Tim's Messy Desk December Wrap Up, and if you click on that and read more, you'll find out. You know, I, I reviewed. You know, the stuff that we started carrying from other manufacturers, like these things right here. Um, and then, you know, what new items did Apogee produce? And you'll see that, you know, we have the launch visualizer that we released last year. Um, we did two updates to Roxim this past year. Um, lots of other new kits and stuff. And then I started talking about what we're going to work on for next year. Um, we got a new kit that's going to be released right in January called the Quick Draw. We've got a new nose cone. Um, in fact, they are a little bit ahead of schedule on the nose cone. We're getting the samples, like they're sending the samples like right away. 
So we'll see what those look like, and if they're good, we'll approve it, and we'll get them in production, and you know, there's a whole bunch of kits gonna be designed around that nose cone. Um, we're gonna be doing tool of the month. Um, that's the part that's probably gonna start next week, a little bit early. Um, but if you wanna read all about that, read that there. It's called Tim's Messy Desk. This is the blog I do on occasion to kind of tell you what's going on in my life and what's going on in the world of Apogee, and that's right there. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Roxim and Roxim Live. So if you go to the Apogee website and you go to How To and Guides and come down here to Software, and then you come over and you can download a free trial of Roxim. Um, you can look at the system requirements, uh, the frequently asked questions, the tutorials. Um, we're doing Roxim Live training right now, so if you click on that, this will take you to our archives. And in our archives are all the episodes, and like I said, this is episode number 101 today. And Michelle did episode 100 last week. And she talked about, will Apogee be selling NAR competition kits? Um, designing a rocket for NAR altitude competition in Roxham and troubleshooting a rocket that has a lower altitude than expected. So that's what she talked about last week. Uh, we also, last week, we had a promotion. Let me uh, bring that promotion back up here. Oh. <laughs> Where did that go? Uh, let me turn that on. Here it is right here. Um, you'll see it's, um, you'll get a hundred or uh, 10,000 free booster credits for the launch visualizer. Um, you just use that coupon code um, RSL100 and that is valid until um, January 16 so you still got about three weeks to use it and if you want to know how to use it just remember um, that coupon code Roxim live 100 RSL 100 and let me go back here to the desktop and what you'll do on that is you'll go to to use it open up a new browser window, go to rocksim.com, and I have a shortcut here, it's just rocksim.com, and Carlos was asking me how to, how to use that, so um, I'll show you how to input that coupon. Um, you'll first, you'll need to log into your account. You need an account. So up here at the top of the screen, they'll say log in, try for free. So click on that to log in, and I'll log into my account and then sign in. So if you don't have an account, create an account so that you can apply those booster credits. Um, booster credits allow you to run simulations as a premium member. Um, and as a premium member, um, all the locks go away because if, if you're here and you're seeing a little lock icon down here on the side that means you're not a premium member and we want you to experience that um, so become a premium member by logging in so if I come up here in my profile it says I'm a premium member and it tells me how many credits I have 97,910 okay so now to use that coupon once you're logged in click on the home button right here that little home icon it's going to take you to this page and then come here to plans click on that and it will show you all the plans you know and what's the difference between the free and the basic and the premium uh, but if you go to pay now and you don't have to pay now we're going to give you the free credits just you got to click on that button um, and so there's a, a tab right here called apply coupon so click on that and then you're going to come here and you're going to enter that coupon code. That was RSL100. 
and then you click apply and it was applied RSL 100 was applied and I got 10,000 booster credits so then you hit close and it should ask you to um, re-log in and I think it's automatically re-logging in me uh, let's go back up here to my profile and before remember it said I had 97,000 credits you know now it added another 10,000 so now I got 107,000 credits <laughs> um, the coupon only works once um, I just started with 97,000 because I run a lot of simulations so I bought a lot of credits but basically since I own the software I can create my own credits um, so that's how you apply the coupon it's really simple you know hit that home page but button um, go to pay now but you're not gonna pay you're just gonna apply the coupon um, and then you'll just have your 10,000 credits so again that was RSL 100 was the coupon code that you're gonna use so let's go back here um, so that was Roxim live training let me go to um, my chat and see here's the chat log see who's talking so Rick says it's 42 degrees and I think Rick is in uh, New Hampshire um, I would love 42 degrees Rick um, if I go over here to my uh, weather <laughs> it shows Colorado Springs is 12 degrees yesterday we had um, our high temperature was zero <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit um, it was bitter cold and this morning it got down to minus 13 but we're a balmy 12 degrees now and tomorrow we're gonna be 45 so I would take your 42 degrees Rick just send it over <laughs> and the rain we'll take the rain too um, low budget Bob says hello Tim Johan Johan is in the Netherlands um, and he says I was um, it's not Tim when he is not having problems <laughs> which means I always have problems every week I need to figure out what's going on with my Ethernet port here um, and Johan says that Michelle's laptop runs better low budget Bob says Merry Christmas Tom says 16 degrees windy in northern Virginia oh well he's still warmer than we are um, minus 250 degrees on the moon <laughs> says Terry and Terry says build a reindeer rocket I can't build a reindeer rocket I could put a decal on the rocket that looks like a reindeer Chuck Garns from Monroeville Pennsylvania says minus three okay Chuck's the winner he's got the lowest temperature today <laughs> Alfred Indy says uh, six degrees and 27 uh, mile per hour wind from the west southwest and low budget Bob says it's 60 to 6 degrees in Buckeye, Arizona. Low budget Bob, we hate you. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I would love 66 degrees. Uh, this is the time of year where I just uh, I wish I wasn't I was back in Florida. I used to live in Florida. I used to work at the Cape launching ro real big rockets from Cape Canaveral but I love Colorado too Colorado is just so pretty um, the mountains are starting to get a little bit of white on them but we could use a lot more snow so um, questions if you have a question put it in the chat and I will answer your rock sim questions um, I did have an uh, one that came in from Carlos um, and he says given global events I was looking for a model of the Patriot missile Apogee sells the lock 2.6 inch Patriot and I noticed a consistent recommendation for nose weight so let's go look at the Patriot missile so if you're at ApogeeRockets.com go to the search bar and type in Patriot 
And here's the Patriot. That's what it looks like. Um, this is about how big it is. You can see me holding it there. It's 2.6 inches in diameter. Uh, and he says, um, a consistent recommendation for nose weight. Using Roxen, please discuss hints and kinks for optimal nose weight engine selections for differing scenarios like, okay, I'd like to get this rocket back. Okay, that's one scenario. What is the highest sub-level one certified flight possible? Okay, we can talk about that. And what other improvements would Tim recommend for this kit and why? Uh, okay, so let me take a look at the kit here. So let's scroll through the web page. I'm just kind of refreshing my memory about what this kit's about. Now I'm kind of looking at uh, what this kit includes as far as components go. Uh, so we have body tubes, a coupler, um, we have an engine mount tube there, through the wall fins, I like that, so I don't have to change that. A 9 inch heavy duty polypropylene plastic nose cone, uh, a parachute, centering rings, 29 millimeter motor mount, um, decals, and a face card. Um, okay, so what improvements would I r recommend for this kit? Um, there's not a lot. Um, I'm scrolling through the motor list here. Uh, I'm looking down here at the tools needed to assemble the kit. And here are some suggestions that I would recommend. You know, motor retention, if you want to put a motor retainer on it because it doesn't include one. So you might want to add that to your kit. Um, there's not a lot of other stuff that I would probably add. Uh, oh, yes, rail buttons. Uh, yes, I would recommend rail buttons. This comes with a launch lug. If I go back up here to the parts, here's the launch lug right here. So it's a quarter inch launch lug. And we would recommend putting on rail buttons, uh, which you'll find here under the recommended additions. Um, so there's the retainer again. Um, we would recommend using the fix-it epoxy clay for making the fillets on the fins. That's kind of standard stuff. And then there's some, you know, other things that you could get, you know, a display stand, using the sanding tee. And then this section down here is what other customers bought. And somebody bought some rocket epoxy. That's good stuff there for um, putting in centering rings and making fin fillets as well. So not a lot of other recommendations on this model so let's say what is the highest sub-level one certification flight possible um, you can get that information here on our website as well so um, just scroll to the section oh, let me scroll all the way to the top and if you go all the way to the top and then you come down a little bit and you'll see this area right here in gray these are tabs so here's one that says recommended motors. And if I click on that, it takes me down to the bottom of the page where I can see the recommended motors. Um, so here's all the ones that we would recommend for the rocket. And I'm gonna sort them by smallest to biggest. All right, and so the question was, what's the highest flight? Okay, so there's a difference between what's the highest flight and what's the biggest non-certified motor I can use. Those are two different things. Uh, but you'll find that answer right here in, in the motor chart. So, so um, to get a certification, you need to use an H motor. So we have to stay below an H motor so I can fly up to a G, and if I scroll down through the list, and there's a lot of G motors you can use. Okay, so here's the last G motor that I can use, a G88. Um, this one, actually it is 
a high power motor. Um, you can see that, you see where it says L1 right there? I highlighted it in blue. That means you have to be level one certified to buy it, even though it's a G motor. And the reason you have to be a level one certified is because it's got really high thrust um, and the maximum thrust that we can buy without a certification is the, the, the number after the letter has to be 80 or less. So this is 88. I can't buy an 88 because the um, average thrust of the motor is 88 newtons and for below a level one the maximum is 80. So the biggest one that I could buy is a G80. That's the biggest motor. That's not necessarily the one that's going to go the highest though. So it might be but sometimes there are motors that will fly higher. So um, now I'm going to go look at the this column right here, which is the altitude of the rocket. See, like um, this G80 flies higher than the G88, even though this one has higher thrust. Um, so, so sometimes there might be a, a rocket motor that's you know, smaller but goes higher. Um, but the G80, 2914 feet. And I could just scroll through. Uh, okay, so here's a G75 right here. This one right here that goes higher. So this is 3243 feet on a G75 motor. So that right now is the current champion oops here's another one a g54 3335 feet okay so now this is the new champion right there and i think that's probably going to be the best one so if the highest flight motor in the patriot rocket is this one right here um, the g54 ah uh, okay so now the next criteria is I'd like to get this rocket back. What choices make that most likely? Now here the answer is different uh, because here we got to know where we're launching from. Um, so let me, I'm going to download this rocket, uh, the Roxim file. So I'm just going to scroll down the bottom of the page to this section right here. And you can see the Roxim file for the lock kit. And I'm just going to click on this. And it just threw it down into my downloads folder. So if I open my downloads folder, there is that lock Patriot. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that into the cloud, into the launch visualizer. So I'm going back to the launch visualizer. And remember, I'm already logged in. And I'm going to upload a new rocket design. So now you got to click that button that says upload new rocket design, then click on browse. And I'm, now it's going to search on my computer. And I know I put it in my downloads folder. And OK, here it is right here. This lock Patriot and open. And I'm going to upload it right there. An error occurred. <laughs> Please try with a valid design. All right, let's try something different. Let's go into Roxim or Roxim Pro. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up in Roxim or Roxim Pro and see if I can figure out why it's giving me an error. Um, so I am in Roxim Pro, and hopefully this is showing up on me on your screen here. I have to see if my face is covering anything because I, I don't have my second monitor going right now. Um, go back to Roxim Pro. Okay, so now I'm going to open. 
So we're in Roxin Pro, hit the File Open button. Then we're going to go to the Downloads folder, find that Lock Patriot, and click Open. Okay, so it did open it here. Something looks weird here. It only looks like I got one fin. Let's look at it in 3D. So I'm going to, to th view it in 3D, click that icon there. Oop, it does show three rock, uh, four fins. Okay. Why was one of them? Everything on this rocket is blue, which makes it really hard to see. And I can tell my launch lug is interfering with that fin right there. Oh, well. Uh, okay, I'm going to call this a Patriot. I'm going to do a couple of little minor changes here just to um, so we can see it better. Let me go back to 2D. Why is it? I should be seeing a fin down there. What is going on? This fin is using a custom fin, even though it's a simple trapezoid. Um, so I'm going to replace that fin. So first I'm going to cancel. Um, and then I'm going to add a fin to the body tube. And I'm just going to make it a fin right here. I'm going to cancel from the database. What is going on? I think I know what's going on. <laughs> um, I am using a version of Roxim Pro that my programmer just gave me. And I think it's got a bug in it. Save your changes? No. Um, about Roxim Pro. Yeah, see, this is a, this is a beta version. That so let me close this, cancel that. Let me go into Roxim, the the normal Roxim that doesn't have the bug in it. That was weird, right? Okay, let's try opening that again. That was in my downloads folder. There it is. Click open. Ah, see, much better, much better. <laughs> okay, this is a Patriot. Um, use the Roxim stability equations. Okay, so we're going to go to the body tube. We're going to go to the fins. I'm making a new fin right here, so click cancel on that. I want four fins. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. I got this fin right here, and my new fin is the orange one. Hopefully you can see this. Um, I'm just going to match the shape. So let's start with the root cord length. I'm just going to make it from the base of the owning part and make it zero inches. So that means it puts the back of the fin at the back of the tube. And now when I change my root cord length, I can better match the length. See, I'm, I'm trying to match that length right there. And I'm a little bit long right here. So let's make it um, 4.5 inches. Hit tab. 4.5 is too small. Let's try 4.6. Too big. It's going to be like 0.55. Okay. All right. So that's the length. Now we let's do the span. Here's the semi-span right here. So I'm just going to drag it right down there. So it's a little tall. Let's call it 1.75. Nope, too high. Let's call it 1.7. Still too high. How about 1.6? That's close enough. Okay, so now I've matched the height. Now I just have to match the tip cord length. And so here's the tip cord. Um, 
This one's going to be a little bit harder because I also have to match the sweep angle at the same time. Oh, that's pretty close. All right. So there's my new fin. Um, now it has a through the wall tab. Let's zoom in. And okay, so right now I need to put a tab that goes in between these two centering rings. I'm just trying to match what the uh, current kit has. So uh, tab depth, I'm going to let it calculate it. And then the tab length. You can see my new length there. And the tab offset is where the starting position. So I'm just going to slide it back just a hair. Let's try a tenth of an inch. So right there is where that tab offset is. So I can get it inside that centering ring. And the one on the back, it's a little bit short. I can move that orange line all the way back there. So I'm just tweaking these parameters here. Ooh, look at that. 4.2 was perfect. And let's give it some color. Um, in 3D, we'll make it red, and in 2D, let's also make it like a darker orange. You can see it a little bit better. So now I got this new fin set. I'm going to delete this other one. So I'm going to, so to get this little menu, I right-clicked with my mouse and then just hit cut, and it say yes, let's go away. Okay, so now there's the rocket. Um, let's. Okay, so we got the fins. I'm going to resave the design. Uh, one thing I want to check, uh, like one of his questions was, there's there's a lot of mass in the the nose cone. So if you click on the M for mass object, it will highlight it up here in the parts tree. And let's open that up. It shows 170 grams of mass. That's a lot of mass, right? Okay, so I just wanted to get kind of a perspective on how much mass is already in that nose cone. And the reason we're adding mass is because these fins are small, and so this rocket is not very stable. The center pressure is pretty far forward. Normally, a center pressure is a lot closer to the front edge of the fins than this one is. And this just tells us that um, we're going to need a lot of nose weight to make sure that that center of gravity stays in front of the center of pressure. So let's put in the biggest motor that we expect to fly. Um, now this could take an H motor, um, but we're gonna we're gonna stay with the G motor. So I'm gonna load a motor, choose an engine, and show only motors that match the motor mount or smaller. That's good. Uh, let's show only the motors that match the motor mount diameter. And we'll sort them by smallest to biggest. And we said, or I got biggest to smallest. It was a G54 that we wanted to use. Let me go back here. I think it was the G54 was the one that's going to go the highest. Yeah, G54. And that is a Cesaroni 3 grain. And it is, I am not seeing a Cesaroni 3 grain G54. Oh, there it is. No, that's Airtech. Here it is. And let's put in that, uh, it had a 10 second delay. So I'm just going to put in 10 seconds and use that. Uh, oh, my wife is calling me, but let me turn her off. All right, so <laughs> interrupted. Uh, so where was I? So we put in the motor and click OK. So what I, I wanted to see was once we put that motor in, does that center of gravity move further aft? And it did. It was up here before we put the motor in. And once we put it in, it moved further back. It's still plenty of room in front of the center of pressure. so. Theoretically, we could take out some nose weight. Um, as long as that center of gravity, 
I like to have it at least one body tube diameter in front of the center of pressure. So here's our center of pressure. So one body tube in diameter would be somewhere around right there. Um, and I could, if I took nose weight out, that center of pressure would slide back. So let's do that. Um, let's take out 50 grams to make it 120 grams. You can see it did go back. You see it jumped. I'm still in front. I can jump back a little bit further. Let's go 100 grams. Eh, we'll call it okay. This is at a margin of 1.84, which means that we're almost two body tube diameters. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, whenever I have small fins like this, um, there's static stability and dynamic stability. And static stability says that this is okay to fly, but my own experience, anything with small fins, dynamically, um, once once it leaves the launch rod, they get a little squirrely. You know, they can we call it fishtailing, where they kind of like the back end's going crazy, like back and forth on us, and um, putting more nose weight in the the nose cone will help with that issue, even though it shows its static stability. Um, so we're gonna leave that there like that. So we change that. Um, let me see under recommended motors. I was wondering why this file size was so big. And it's got a whole bunch of motors saved with it. And I'm going to delete all of those. So I highlight them and then right click and hit delete and say yes. And all those go away. There's no recommended motors there. I'm just trying to get the file size small so that I can upload it back into the launch visualizer without an error. Um, let's make a couple other little changes here. Um, first, let's change the nose cone color. Everything was all blue, and blue rockets are just so hard to figure out. So that, I'm just going to choose some random colors here. Okay, what's going on? Why aren't you going? It locked up on me. <laughs> what's going on? Oh, I got the color picker going on in the background. <laughs> okay, that's what was going on. Um, the body tube. Let's change that color to like a a grayish color and purple in 2D. Um, my launch lug, I'm correcting this file. Let me find that launch lug right here. So let me click on the launch lug. Here's the launch lug. Let's open it up. Um, if we look at it from the back end, remember we were talking that, you know, it's right on the fin. Well, we can't have that. So we let's move that. So go to the radial position tab and then just kind of roll it off to the side. So I'm going to have at 45 degrees, just there like that. And let's look at it from the side view again. Um, and I like to put my launch lug so that it spans the center of gravity. So here's the center of gravity, and that's where the rocket will balance. So I'm going to move the location of that launch lug so that it spans across the center of gravity, because that's the point on the rocket where the launch lug, the, the, there's, a, there's a torque that's trying to, when it's on the launch rail rod, um, if you try to twist it, um, if it, if it spans right at the center of gravity, that's the strongest position. If you put it down here and you try to rotate it um, at the bottom of the rocket, it will probably snap off. So that's the strongest location. Just as somewhere where pretty close, you know, where it spans it. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, if you put it like right there, it would be okay. Um, a lot of I. The other thing is I like to have the launch rod as close, the launch lug or the rail buttons as close to the back end of the rocket as possible. And that's because when you're lifting the rocket up onto the launch rail or the rod, 
when the when the lug is at the back end of the rocket, it's just easier to get it onto the launch pad. And so that's kind of why I like to have it um, as close to the bottom as possible. Typically what I'll do, if, I, if there's a really long launch lug like this, I'll cut it in half. And I'll put half of it at the very back and then the other half so that it, it's in front of the center of gravity. Just, it doesn't have to be much, just a little bit. Um, and that gives you the best of both worlds where it's strong and it's easy to get onto the launch rod. Um, and let's change the color. That's the 2D color and this is the 3D color. Let's make it black. Okay, click OK. I'm gonna save this. Yeah, let's look at it in 3D just to take a look at it. All right, so that looks better as the Patriot. I could change the color of that centering ring in the back, but it's okay. All right, let's, let's see. No, I don't want, why did I hit the open button? Let's go save it, and let's try to um, re-upload it to the launch visualizer. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this screen. And I should still be logged in. I can just double check. Yep, I'm still logged in. Upload new rocket design. Hit the browse button. Um, there's my Patriot. Oh, it's much smaller before. Before it was over 200 kilobytes. Now we were under 28. So that's good. Upload. Let's see if we get the same error message. Same error message. That's unusual. <laughs> I would have thought I cleared it out. Why would it give me an error message? Um, let me look at these components here. If there's, if, let's let's look at um, the parts list. Sometimes looking at the parts list, we'll see if there's anything that that is un, unknown. Um, when I'm looking at the parts list, I'm trying to when I'm trying to clear an error, I look at the center, um, the mass of the of the part. So the nose cone has a mass of 85 grams. That seems logical. Um, this is the mass object, and we set it at 100 grams, so that's fine. The body tube um, has a mass of 131 grams. I can live with that. Um, the motor mount tube has a mass of 33 grams. Uh, centering ring has a mass of 7.6 grams. This centering is also 7.6. This one is 7.6. This has got three centering rings in it. Um, a shock cord mount. That's a mass there. That one's okay. So far, everything looks good. Launch logo looks fine. Fins, okay. Custom material, okay. That should not be. <laughs> um, so we got a bad material for one thing. Okay, so let's go to the fin sets. Where did my fins go? There's my fin. It says balsa. Let's try plywood. Baltic birch. 73 grams for the set of four. Each one is 18. So that looks okay. Let's try that again. Rocket parts list. And it was the fin set at the very bottom. All right, so that looks uh, custom. No. That's okay. Let's run a simulation in Roxim and see what happens. So we have the G54 in there um, under the flight events. Parachute at maximum ejection delay. Simulation controls 800 starting state. 
Let's make it a 60 inch launch rod. Wind conditions, that looks okay. And let's see the flight profile. Let's just take a look at it. Okay, so here's the rocket down here. Hopefully you can see that. Let's launch it. The rocket's taking off. It's staying in the cone. I want the uh, apogee point within that cone, and we're going to be pretty close. A little bit outside, I think. Yeah. And there's the apogee. And now the rocket's parachute is out, and it's coming down. You can see it comes down. And it lands approximately 2,300 feet away. So that looked pretty good. Why is this giving me an error when I try to upload it? Let's save it as a new name. File, save as. Patriot. Let's put it on the desktop. Hit save. Okay, launch visualizer. Work with me here. <laughs> Browse. I'm not expecting it to clear out the error now because I don't know what's wrong with it. There's not nothing that looked out of the ordinary to me. Um, there's the lock patriot. Open. Upload. And if this doesn't work, oh, it was. Okay, maybe it was the name. Maybe all those dots and dashes in the name it didn't like. Okay, so here's the rocket sitting on the pad. And it looks pretty good there. All right, so let's use up some of our credits here. So let's choose a launch site. And so we have to wait for the map to load. Um, this is our Pueblo, Colorado launch site here. And if I zoom out, I'm trying to give you the lay of the land. Um, so there's Pueblo, Colorado. Colorado Springs is up here. If I keep zooming out, you can see the state of Colorado, which is a nice rectangle. Uh, if I zoom out further, you can see you know the United States. And I think Carlos is in Marietta, Georgia. So he's probably at one of these launch sites here. And if I click on these pins, I can see the different launch sites. Um, I don't know where, there's Marietta, Georgia, right there. So he probably flies probably somewhere near that Mills Spring Academy. So I'm going to choose that website, or launch site. So um, it was called SOAR, S-O-A-R. And there it is, Mills Spring Academy. Click OK. And now it put the uh, rocket launch pad at that site. The red dot is our launch pad. And I'm just zooming in. And so we are in the middle of uh, left center field on this little um, baseball diamond. Yeah, we can see we got some landing area over here. We could try to land in. Landing on that baseball field is going to be hard though. Especially when I'm going 3,000 feet. So this is the answer to this question. So like, I'd like to get the rocket back. What choices make that the most likely? Okay, so here is where we're trying to make it the most likely. And you have to make some decisions here. The first one is where are we launching from? Um, so on this launch site here, um, this baseball diamond is surrounded by a lot of trees. Um, if I zoom out a little bit, you know, I got I got more area if I launch over here. This looks like some kind of um, gravel pit or something. Um, so let's move our launch site. Let's move it to right here, um, where there's more area that and it's less trees. See, there's, there's trees over here, but there's a lot of area here. So that's the first thing that gives you more likely to get it back. Um, so once you change the launch site, and it, you can change the launch site just by double clicking. And so I'm gonna move it back over here. And then once you have it where you want, hit confirm launch site. 
And what it does is it grabs the exact latitude and longitude and the altitude above sea level for that particular spot on the face of the Earth. Okay, so our next thing is how are we going to angle this launch, this rocket as it takes off? So I can angle it a little bit to the north, northwest, because I don't want it to land in these trees here, and I don't want, ooh, I think there's a lake right here. There's it looks like there's a pond or a reservoir right there. So I want to stay out of that. Um, so and I got a lot of room down here, so I'm going to angle it like this way and let's see what happens. So to angle the rocket go to the starting state tab and I'm going to angle it a few degrees and I got 11.14 and then here's where you're going to change the compass direction. So I'm rotating the rocket around and I'm just grabbing the little pointer right here and just sliding it around until I get it to a direction that I think I want to go in and then it's going to be okay. Now let's put in our rocket motor um, let's also check the wind. So right now we have a steady wind and if I click on it it'll tell me how much my wind is and I'm going to make it like four miles an hour. All right, I did it back four miles an hour. Okay, out of the west. So the direction of the wind is coming out of the west. And you can tell the direction by the way the arrow is pointed. And let's pick our rocket motor, and we had that G54, so click on the Choose Motor button there, Choose Engine. Let me move this over so you can see a little bit more here. Um, and we can search in G54. There's our G54. And we're going to make it a custom of 10 seconds. And use 10 seconds. Click, let me see, hangs out the back by a half of an inch. Click OK. And we're ready to launch. So then when you're ready to launch down here, probably under my face, there's the launch button. And you just go ahead and click on that. And that will launch the rocket. And you say hit simulate. And it's running the simulation right now. And when it's done, it will show us the rocket sitting on the pad at the location we specified. There's the rocket. And let me move the north around to the top. The north is the black arrow on the uh, compass wheel right here. I don't know if you can see that compass wheel. There's the compass wheel. And I'm just moving it so that it kind of points straight up and that will be north. And so there's our rocket sitting on the pad. Let's see the, the trajectory on here. So I want to turn on the weather cocking cone and I want to see the trajectory path. And I want to see the ground track and the extruded flight path. That's kind of like the, the rockets flying in the air. I want to know, you know, draw a line from the where the rocket is back down to the ground. And so as the rocket moves, it's drawing these lines down and it creates like a curtain. And that kind of gives you it's a little bit easier to see, um, gives you perspective on the flight path of the rocket. So I'm going to click OK on that. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. See this cone right here? This is our weather cocking cone. And the height of the cone will kind of tell us how high this rocket's going to go. And you can see I'm zooming out a lot. And that's, there's the top of the cone right there. So if I, you know, rotate this, you know, view around, you can see I'm going pretty high. Um, so it's probably likely that um, I may not get this rocket back. <laughs> uh, we got to, we got, remember, we set this up with a five mile an hour wind out of the west blowing across this way. So it's likely that the rocket is going to land somewhere down here. And it's going to be in the air 117 seconds. And I can see that here from um, the timeline. And let's click Launch. So now the rocket's taking off. And I'm seeing a, a mini view right here of the rocket taking off. And this shows me my trajectory of the rocket going up. And it's still going up. You can see that ground path down there. 
And once it gets to the apogee point, I'll stop it. And I'll get it oop, right there. That green dot is the apogee point. And that tells me, the color green tells me that the apogee point stayed within the cone. And that's what we want to see because that defines a good flight. Um, so at this point, you can see my curtain. You can rotate it around. You can see these lines coming down, kind of create a curtain. And then the ground path is down here. And so already we're flying out of our launch site. So if I look at it, I can see I'm almost to the edge of the lake. And I'm, I'm at the apogee point. Um, and the parachute is out. So the rocket's not going to go any further this way because it's not going to drift into the wind once the parachute is out. So I know that is okay, but will it land before it hits this little forest of trees? And let me just back out of this a little bit. Let me um, yeah, continue running it here. So now it, it, it popped out and it's coming downwards and it's right there. And it's going to take 117 seconds, so I'm just going to grab the slider and just slide it forward until it gets down to the ground. And there it did. Ooh, look at that. So if I swing this around a little bit, see this solid curtain of uh, the extruded flight path? It shows me, you know, the ground path. So it, it went up and then it now it's drifting to the east. And I am going to stay on this launch site. So that, I would call that a perfect launch. Because um, I'm not losing my rocket because it's staying on the launch site. And so that answers the question, how do you get it back? What choices make it most likely? So we, what, what we chose was where we're launching from, the rocket motor, the wind conditions, um, the launch angle, the launch direction, the azimuth, and also the delay selection. That's also a choice that you got to make. So there's a lot of choices here that you as a flyer have to make. Because there's so many choices, we need a tool like what you see here, the launch visualizer, that can allow us to see how those choices will affect where the rocket lands. Will we get it back? Um, I would say that this right here is looking good. Um, and uh, let me cancel, close this. And it tells me I went 2,900 feet with the G54. Um, it, it's not as high as this one because it's different weather conditions and different launch location. Um, but for this launch site, that's okay. This first one was the one that we ran in Roxim. Now this is the one we ran in the launch visualizer. So they're a little, they're set up a little bit different. Um, so that's why you'll see a difference in the maximum altitude. So that answered that question. Um, let me go back and I'm looking here for the chat. See if we got any more questions here. Uh, Michelle says it's a custom fin. <laughs> it's a custom fin set and not custom material. Says Rick and Rick is right. Yeah, I thought it was the material, but it wasn't material. It was the custom set. Um, Terry says, rename it Cranky Rocket. Terry says, the nose weight was a GPS tracker. Cool. Yeah, that would be a good idea. If, if, you're, if you think that your rocket might drift too far, then you might want to put a tracker into it. Um, and we do have trackers at the Apogee website. So if you go back to the Apogee website and you put in tracker, um, we've got the uh, simple GPS tracker right there. That's the one I was looking for. Oh, we're out of stock on the tracker. 
Uh, but this tracker, if we had more in stock, I'm trying to uh, show you how big this tracker is, and there's nothing to show you. It's it's about um, three or four inches long. Let me see what the specifications show it as. Um, that's the receiver. Here's the transmitter. So the transmitter, the size is one inches, <laughs> one inches, one inch by 2.8 inches. So remember, our nose cone on this particular rocket was 2.8 inches, not 2.8. It was nine inches long. So 2.8 will fit easily with inside the nose cone. So that would probably be where I'd put it in the rocket. Um, Putting it in a nose cone does require a lot of surgery, but it is doable, and you can get that in there. Um, okay, so that was the last question. Um, what do I want to see? I want to see... What do I want to see? I want to see this. I want to go back to the wide angle, and there is the 10,000 free booster credits for the launch visualizer. Um, let me go back to the launch visualizer here just a second. Let me go back to the launch visualizer. I want to show you one more thing. Um, desktop. I need to show my desktop. Okay, so here's the launch visualizer. I want to uh, share this design with you. So you would take this right here, copy that. Sometimes it doesn't copy, so then I... Okay, so here, I just want to get that link right here, and I'm going to put it into the chat and so now you can see the same simulation that I just ran right there um, and unfortunately I can't put the rocket itself the Roxim file because remember I changed that Roxim file um, and I'm trying to think where could I put it that, I, that would be easy to get it. Um, I'll think about it. Maybe I'll re-upload it to the Apogee website on the Lock Patriot page um, so that, uh, because that file there didn't seem right. Um, so I will do that. And let's go back here to the wide angle. Okay, so here's the Roxim code. Don't forget about that. That's our free gift. We're celebrating breaking 100 episodes, um, which is really cool. I am so happy that we were able to do that. I didn't, the, the fact that you guys still show up looking for advice and help, I really appreciate it. You know, and I'm here to help you try to get uh, the most out of Roxim. Uh, I will be back next week, this time. Um, we, we will be working. That will be the 29th? No, the 20, the 30th, the 30th of December. And we'll be back. Um, we're taking off um, Monday the 26th and Monday, January 2nd. Those are our holidays because Christmas and New Year's Day fall on a Sunday this year. So we will not be in the office on Monday, but the website is still open. And we are open for business and all orders that are placed over the weekend, including Christmas Day, will be shipped out on Tuesday. And that's our shipping guarantee. If you go to our website, we guarantee shipping. Um, if we have it in stock, we'll ship it out the same day, but since we're off, it will go out the next business day, which will be on Tuesday. Um, so, we'll see you um, next week and um, start uh, thinking about what questions you have for Roxham, and then I'll, I'll discuss them next week. 
So um, we're going to end the uh, the event here in five, four, three, two, one. Go out and launch something. <laughs>